Hey neighbor, welcome to my living room. Uh, you're probably here because like me, you're a huge Alan Stone fan and when you first heard the song play on Spotify or on YouTube, you thought, man, I absolutely have to learn that song. Um, not sure about you, but I'm a pretty average guitar player. I'm actually a bass player. And I really wanted to learn this song. And what I realized through learning it was that once you can nail a really simple strumming pattern that Alan does on the song, the rest of the song is just a matter of um, substituting one chord for another. So I'm gonna show you what that strumming pattern is and I'll walk through all the different chords with you guys and show you how to play this fantastic song. So one thing to note is that uh, this song, it looks like Alan's playing it in the key of E. He starts off with the, what looks like an E major, but he's actually detuned each one of his guitar strings a whole step. So when it looks like he's playing an E, it's still the E shape, but he's actually playing a D. So um, I'm not sure about you, but I'm a bit of a lazy guitar player. I don't want to detune my guitar just to play one song and then have to retune it to play other songs that are in normal keys. So I don't like detuning my guitar for the song. I just play the song in the key of E rather than the key of D. Now, um, I'd say the caveat to playing it in the key of E is that it's a lot more difficult to sing. Alan Stone already has a really high range to his voice and we, when he sings it in the key of D, he goes pretty high. So it's even that much more difficult to sing this song properly in the key of E. Um, I pro I'm not gonna try singing the song for you, but I'll show you all the steps and then you can choose whether you wanna play this song in the key of E or whether you wanna detune all of your strings um, down to E flat or to D flat, or sorry, or to D. It's completely up to you. So let's start off by talking about the strumming pattern that's used primarily throughout the entire song. And um, what I want you to do in your left hand is just form an E major chord. And then on your right hand, you're gonna assign your thumb to the D string, your uh, middle finger to the D string, that's the third string down, and uh, your third finger uh, or your ring finger to the G string. And what I want you to do is pluck those three strings at the same time. So your thumb is kind of gonna go um, down and your other uh, fingers are kind of gonna come up and out. And if you pluck those three strings at the same time, again, the E, the D, and the G, it sounds like this. Okay. So if you have that down, the next thing that you wanna do is do a soft percussive slap with your hand as you bring it back down. So try doing a slap after you pluck those three strings at the same time. And it doesn't have to be a super hard slap. You're really just bringing your hand back and you wanna get it back in the same position so that you can easily pluck those three strings again. Once you have that down, um, I want you to pluck the E, the D, and the G string one at a time, one after uh, each other. And when you do those three concepts one after each other in a row, they sound like this. Okay, one more time. So you should be able to do that over and over because that's the pattern that you're gonna be using throughout the entire song. If you struggle with this pattern, then you're gonna have a really tough time trying to navigate through all the different chord changes. So just spend a little while getting this under your fingers, and once you do, you're pretty much ready to take on the rest of the song. Once you're feeling confident with that, um, the strumming pattern sounds like this. Okay, so if you have that strumming pattern down, now let's move on to the chords that Alan's playing. The first chord is the one that we were playing. It's simply an E major. And the next chord is an F sharp minor seven. And to play that, you take your first finger, you put it on the second fret, you take your third finger, skip a string, put it on the D string, and then your fourth finger, 
uh, oh sorry, your, uh, your third finger, your ring finger goes on the G string. And that sounds like this when you play them one by one. And as you go, you're still gonna be playing the same strings. You're gonna be playing the E string, the D string, and the G string. Okay? So if we take that strumming pattern that we just learned and we apply it to these first two chords, it'll sound like this. Okay? The next chord is a G sharp minor seven. It's essentially the exact same chord that we have right here. Move down, or sorry, moved up a whole step or two frets. And if we apply the same pattern to those three chords now, it sounds like this. Okay, the next chord is the G sharp seven. And what you do for that chord is you slide your third finger, the ring finger, over one fret while keeping your other two fingers where they are. Okay, you get that nice jazzy kind of sound. So put those together. Cool. Um, one important thing is that you want to make sure that you're going through this slowly and making sure that all the different strings um, and notes are ringing out properly. You really won't find any shortcuts going through this song trying to breeze your way through it if your technique is not, um, is not great. So, um, so we did the E major, F sharp minor 7, G sharp minor 7 to the G sharp 7. Now this chord transition is a little tricky. Um, it's the one that I had the most difficulty with when I was first was trying to learn the song. But you're going to move your first finger to the second fret on the D string. Your uh, third finger, your ring, over to the fourth fret on the A string. And then your pinky or your fourth finger over to the G string. Okay. And I want to show you the next chord because I'm going to connect them together. This uh, middle finger here is going to go right behind your pinky eventually when we go from one chord to another. And the way that sounds is, is like this. Okay, so you wanna make sure that it's really just right behind that pinky, ready to be played once you take your, your, your pinky off. So from the G7, we have switch. Okay, so again, this was probably one of the most difficult things uh, to learn in the song for me. So practice that transition until you have it smooth. And don't be afraid to go really, really slow with the song. Speed comes over time as you practice things uh, slowly and purposefully. Okay, so after that, um, you, we have the little uh, ending to the intro there. And what happens is that we have a G sharp minor seven chord. This is the third chord that we played in the beginning. Then the F sharp minor seven chord. Back to the E major. And it sounds, uh, Alan plays it like this. So he actually does a slide here from the F sharp minor seven over to the G sharp minor seven. It's up to you if you wanna play that slide. You don't need to, it's still gonna sound completely fine if you just play them one by one. But notice that the strumming pattern is a little different here. He goes. So dum, dum, dum. And then there's this cool little lick that I'll show you guys in a second. So let's put all of these uh, chords together and hear how they sound. and then that cool little lick. So for that lick, what he does here is a little hammer on from uh, your first finger here over to the next fret. It's a hammer on and, and pull off. And then you play the next uh, note up. Um, then the next note up here, you do a slide. 
two frets over, then back, and then you play the open A string. And then you're back to the E major chord. So it sounds like this. Okay, so if I put everything together. Okay, so that's the intro. Um, have a try. Now after the intro is played, Alan goes into the verse and the chords for the verse is the exact same as the intro. The only difference is that when you're about to get into the chorus, instead of going back to the E major, he goes to a B. And to play the B, you put your first finger on the second fret on the A string, and then your um, third and fourth fingers on the fourth fret on the D and G string. And instead of playing the A, sorry, the E, the D, and the G string, you want to play the a, the D, and the G string. So your second, third, and fourth. Otherwise, you're going to miss that that um, that B note here in this B chord. So follow me. Okay. Now he goes into the chorus, and for the chorus, you're going to start off playing an A major chord. And you're also going to use that uh, A, D, and G string to play this chord. So it sounds like this. Then you go back to a G sharp 7 chord. And you're going back to using the E, the D, and the G string. And then a, a C sharp minor 7 chord to the C sharp minor 6. And then once again. And then here you just stay on that C sharp minor 7. One more time. Now here we go F sharp minor 7 to a B7. So this B7 is played with your first finger on the first fret. Uh, D string, second finger, second fret on the A string, and third finger, second fret on the fourth string. And your strumming, or sorry, the strings that you're going to be playing are the A, D, and G string again. And I pluck them all at the same time. Sounds really nice like that. So that's how you play your chorus. And after you're done playing that B7 chord, you go back into the, uh, the intro chords again. Then you play your verse, then you go back to the chorus. Now let's talk about the transition from the chorus to the bridge. Um, for that, you're gonna be playing a F sharp minor seven chord. This one is played a little bit differently. You put your first finger on the second fret on the G string, then you put your third finger on the fourth fret on the A string, and then your pinky right below that. And you're gonna be plucking the um, a, D, and G string. Shift over two frets, same shape. Again. Oops. Now, you're going to go to the B7 again. And you can do something like that. It sounds nice to end things off. Or you could pluck the B7 like you've plucked the rest of the chords. All right, guys, that's pretty much it to the song. Like I said before, this really all comes down to that strumming pattern and getting that under your fingers. After that, all you have to do is pretty much switch up these chords and then alter things slightly. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know if this video has helped you learn the song. And if you decide to post a song on YouTube, a cover of yourself playing this, please share a link with me. I would love to see it. 
And I would love to know that this uh, tutorial helps someone learn this very awesome song. And Alan Stone, if you're watching this, please drop me a line. All right, take care, guys.